So for those, for those who just came in, uh, we have people from LA, we have people from Puerto Rico, we have people from, from Chicago. Where's everybody else from? I think, oh, Linda, you're from Atlanta, right? DC. <laughs> okay, we have DC. Was a Paul from DC here? Amazing, amazing. Do, do, do. And folks, I do am. I I do am. Great English, Armand. I am recording this uh, for you folks to check it out later on. So if you're not comfortable being on screen, because I am recording this in gallery view, if you're not comfortable being on screen, feel free to turn your camera off. No problem. Do, do, do. Who's from Portugal? Same time zone I'm at. Yeah. Well, I'm in I London. Am from I'm in <laughs> London right now. So we are closer to each other than yeah. all the other guys. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys, let's give it another minute. And we'll get things going. We do have quite a quite number of people missing, but that's okay. You came in early, you came in on time. So I'm not going to hold you folks back from uh, having fun with Tommy. Is my sound okay? Do you hear anything in the background or is it just fine? No, sounds it's good. perfect. Awesome, awesome. Do, 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 do. All right. What I'm gonna do, I'm, what I'm gonna do right now is gonna meet everybody by myself and Tommy so that when people come into the room, it won't like distract or won't mess up the, the conversation. So I'm gonna go ahead, go ahead and mute everybody but myself and Tommy. Oh, there we go. Sound check for Tommy. Yep. Hello. Hi. Awesome. Awesome. Let me go ahead and uh, meet the others really quick. Hey, Jonathan. Hey, Elena. I'm going to meet, meet you folks really quick. Here we go. Awesome. Awesome. Hey everybody, Irman Brady here with Irman Taraj. Thank you so much for tuning in. As you know, the last few months we've been doing a series of benefits online for inner city arts. Inner city arts is widely regarded as one of the nation's most effective arts education providers, is an oasis of learning, achievement, and creativity in the heart of Skid Row, and a vital partner in the work of transforming the lives of young people in Los Angeles and beyond. So thank you folks for donating um, to, to the cause. And today we have my buddy, I've known him for about, well, I think five years now. He was uh, one of my previous live events back in like 2016. So it's been quite some time. Uh, Tommy Harper is a producer and executive producer whose credits include Star Wars, The Force Awakens, Star Trek Into Darkness, Cloverfield Paradox, and the upcoming Top Gun Maverick, which I know we can't talk too much about. Hopefully we get a little bit of a teaser, Tommy, if we can. So everyone, please give a silent round of applause to Tommy Harper. Tommy, good to have you here, sir. Thanks for having me. Thanks for sure. having me. And for those who registered, like I said um, prior, uh, today is a little bit different. We do want to see who you folks are and get to know you before we dive into our conversation with Tommy. So I'm going to go around the room. When I call on you, please share who you are, kind of maybe your role in the industry, producer, writer, whatever you are. Um, share a little bit what, about what you're doing. Maybe if you want to talk about it, maybe mention what you're working on now. I would love to know your, your personal career goals career goals. I'll let's know that so we can kind of dictate the conversation towards that. So I'm going to start with Sarita. Let's hear from you. Okay. Hi, Tommy. Um, Hi. I'm an award-winning writer of over 40 published books, scripts, adaptations. I teach writing and I'm also a forensic nurse. Uh, I help others with their medical poison and uh, forensic questions for their stories. Um, and I also um, write for Splash Magazine so I can help you review your film when it comes out. I've written about Ehrman in, in the magazine before. <laughs> um, uh, I just finished writing up a true crime that I help investigate. Uh, and uh, I work with domestic violence victims. I have a story about that. Uh, I, have, um, I have I have a number of award-winning stories. Thank you so much, Sarita. Wow. Uh, let's go with Jacqueline. Hi, I'm Jacqueline Whitehair. I'm an actress and creator. My background is in performing. Um, I'm classically trained and also studying sitcom comedy. 
Um, as far as creating goes, I created a short film breach in 2017 that circled Film Fest. Um, most recently, I was cast in AMC's Lace, which is a legal drama. I also produced the Nellie Bly story, which is the first installment of a web series featuring interviews with females who were ahead of their time. Um, and that came out last fall. So I'm currently working on the next series. I'm looking for opportunities in acting. I am also, I'm, I have a pilot from a book and I got the okay from the author. So I'd love to hear about ways to get my pilot seen. And also I'm just, you know, really interested in learning opportunities. So I'm looking forward to your advice. Thank you so much, Jacqueline. Um, up next, we have Albert. Hey, Albert. Oh, you're still muted. Oh, here we go. <laughs> I appreciate the opportunity, Ehrman. Uh, also, I um, just want to shout out my students for being in this uh, Zoom meeting as well. Thank you, Tommy Harper, for uh, having this and giving your time. Uh, I just want to say uh, I am uh, a teacher here at Villa Park High School. I work with numerous students, uh, talent scouting. I'm a creative director for Visual Professionals. Uh, we're an organization that works with um, MIT, um, numerous uh, talent agencies to have students get involved with uh, media, film, uh, photography, modeling, and acting. Uh, and uh, yeah, I appreciate it. I have, I believe I have Johnny here on the side. Uh, Johnny, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, um, my name is Jonathan. I uh, go to Villa Park High School. I'm from Orange, California, and I do uh, parkour and free running on my free time. Uh, uh, I want to get into stunt doubling and stunt stuff. That's about it. Thank you so much, Jonathan and Albert. Up next, we have, let's go with uh, Pedro. How you doing, sir? Uh, I'm yet. Yeah, you can listen to me now, yeah? Yeah. Cool. So my name is Rui, I'm from Portugal. I'm a film director. I've made around six short films until now and I'm trying to make the first feature, you know, um, the first project we actually have two projects right now one is a huge sci-fi from from an american writer a brilliant story and the other is a horror story also from an american writer uh, a really cool story with a uh, a different twist and yeah right now i'm uh, with my company trying to reach out to producers and executives i often go to imdb and contact a bunch of companies and and i'm just in that phase in that uh, um stage where how can i um how should i approach executives and companies uh, in order to show them the pitch decks we build the budget sheets we have uh, the season reels i edited myself for example we, we, we do have some replies uh, companies like voltage pictures are taking a look at the horror uh, movie for example they are praising a lot the, the pitch decks because they love the the visual style we created to the pitch decks but uh, sometimes it's hard to, you know, how, if you haven't made anything yet, uh, besides short movies, how do you get in? How do you get people really to, to, to listen to you, you know, and, and to take, uh, to give you a chance at least to look at the pitch deck and the sizzle reel and the story you want, you want to tell. So yeah, this is it. Thank you so much, Rear. We do have a few more. Um, so uh, folks, if you could keep it to like 30 seconds, just so we can get to the audience, or sorry, to the Q&A with Tommy, just 30, 30 second uh, elevator pitch, if you don't mind. Uh, let's go ahead and do um, Axel followed by Rodney. Hi everyone, uh, I'm Axel Orfman. I'm uh, originally from Morocco, but I'm Moroccan, Spanish, American. So I have made projects, uh, especially short films all over, three of the three countries. Uh, I have directed over 90 episodes for TV between sitcoms and uh, drama. I have two feature films. My last one was uh, an award-winning many festivals around the world. 
and I'm a screenwriter director and I'm now working, uh, we just got funded for a web series that now we're preparing to start shooting in, uh, in August in Chicago. And yeah, that's it. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Welcome, Axel. Thank you so much for being here. We're going to have Ronnie followed by Ross and then Matt. Cool. Hey, my name is Rodney Holland. Um, I thank you, Tommy, for joining us today. Appreciate it. Um, I'm a writer producer. Uh, I co produced a film uh, a couple years back, uh, starring Academy Award winner Ernest Borgnine and also um, Emmy winners uh, Richard Schiff and Ann Mir and Doris Roberts. Um, that was called Another Harvest Moon. Uh, recently, I've been working on a couple of different projects. Um, I've got um, a feature film. Um, that deals uh, with some social issues uh, that's in uh, early pre-production right now. And I have a director and two producers attached to that. And we're getting ready to start shopping that for financing. Um, And then I have a television series that um, I have developed based upon uh, some of my early life experiences uh, growing up in uh, rural North Carolina. And I've got a full executive producing team on that. And, uh, we are actually getting ready to um, to start pitching uh, to studios uh, in about a month um, through uh, a contact with my executive producer who has a, an output deal at a studio. Thank you. Thank you, Ronnie. Up next, we have Ross, followed by Matt Boda, and then Piers. Hi. First, I want to say thanks, Armin, for inviting me to this today. I appreciate that and appreciate your time today, Tommy. Uh, my name is Ross Martin. I'm a screenwriter. I've written in uh, various genres, comedy, drama, horror, and my latest is a sci-fi called Rivals. Um, I've also done some directing. I've directed, produced, direct, co-wrote, co-directed a feature film called Rubbernecking. And I've also edited uh, War of the Worlds 2, The Next Wave, starring and directed by C. C. Thomas Howell for The Asylum. Um, and um, I'm seeking representation as a writer and possibly a director as well. Uh, thank you. Mm-hmm. Thanks so much, Ross. We have a few more. We're going to go with Matt, then Paul, then Linda. Hey, Matt. Hey, guys. How's it going? Uh, I'm actually on a Starbucks commercial right now, uh, shooting a Starbucks commercial. But um, my name is Matt. I'm a producer uh, in Los Angeles. We make proof of concept films. So we fund about seven minute you know, they're shorts essentially, but they're, uh, they encompass the full idea. They pair up with the intellectual property and we have some really good ones. Um, my, uh, colleague, uh, and writer, Jeff Ratto, who's on the line right now, we have an amazing show, uh, called after lifetime star, Stephen Williams, Aparna Brielle and Max Lloyd Jones. And, uh, we have a pitch ready for Amazon and we just wanted to get some possible advice on that so um thank you very much for the time guys and matt and i are actually colleagues ourselves so welcome matt <laughs> up next yeah we, we Armand and i just went to atlanta and did a movie together and it was a bonding experience <laughs> so we just got back like two weeks ago yes sir yes sir up next we have paul linda then jeff and then we're gonna get to, uh, after that we have a few more then we'll get to the q a with uh with tommy thank you so much for your patience tommy and uh listen to everybody's uh, background. So Paul, Linda, then Jeff. Oh, one second, Paul, you're muted. I'm mute. Here we go. Oh, can you now? <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, thank you again for inviting me out, man. Thanks again, Tommy Harper, for taking your time out to um, instill your wisdom. Uh, my name is Paul Jeff from Washington, D.C. I'm a writer, uh, actor, creator, and editor. Um, just finished the film. Um, on a very important topic, uh, which is human trafficking, uh, called Broken Exchange Encoded. I played an officer. Um, I have another film that we just finished um, on Amazon Prime called A Worthy Punishment, and another one coming up um, on Amazon Prime November the 2nd called Thanksgiving Rose. Uh, I've been looking for um, representation, just more opportunities. A lot of stuff and opportunities that I've been getting have been um, on my own merit uh, without an agent or representation, but I know you can only go so far without getting you know, agent and having that representation, you know, on your corner. Um, But I know you've done some amazing things, um, just helped produce um, a romantic comedy as well. So taking my skills from the acting to the producing side and to the writing side and just getting the whole aspect together. But um, that's, that's what I'm about, man. And I'm looking to move 
to LA or to Atlanta to further my talents and further my skills. Welcome, Paul. Up next, we have Linda, Jeff, and Vikrant. Hey, hey, thanks for having me. Linda Zolo, Atlanta, Georgia. I am a lover of my main Coon Kitty, Lucius Maximus. I am a licensed motorcyclist of 11 years, actress, writer. I have my short film, California, that deals with domestic violence. So Sarita, I'd love to connect with you. Um, and I'm just here to learn um, and possible. I'm, I'm working on a feature film script. It's a sci-fi, uh, a prequel to a big franchise. So I have big aspirations on that. Um, and yeah, I'm just happy to be here. Thank you. Thank you so much, Linda. We have Jeff Vigrant and Danny. Here, Ron. Thanks. So I've sold a bunch of different short stories in the fantasy, horror, and sci-fi genres in the past, and that kind of led into screenwriting. I did take one script, and I'm actually turning it into a graphic novel with an artist in the UK whose name is Jean-Michel Ringuet, and he's had stuff published through Image and IDW and then some smaller publishers. And as Matt Boda mentioned earlier, I met Matt through his Get It Made program, and he liked one of the shorts that I had written. And then that basically turned into a pilot and that turned into the proof of concept that we filmed the weekend of May the 2nd after Matt came back from Atlanta with Armand. So we're at the point where we're going to be editing that and then developing the pitch deck for, and then just are trying to look for advice about how best to present these to people, how to find people who are interested in watching the proof of genre who are, in, or pardon me, the proof of concept who are interested in the type of genre that it's in, et cetera. Thank you, Jeff. We have Vigrant, Danny, then Noreen. Thanks, Armand. Uh, hi, Tommy. My name is Vic, Vic. My name is Vic. I am a film composer and music producer. Uh, as far as what I've accomplished, I have composed music for about two, I composed music for two PBS documentaries and about thirty short films. Uh, very recently, I did fit. Uh, I did finish where we were working with, uh, with Matt B B Boda uh, a few months back on one of his short films. We're currently working on one right now. And I guess one of my, uh, I guess my goal, my career go uh, goals, I'm interested in making music for studio scripted action films and television, as well as animation projects. Thank you so much, Vigrant. Uh, I think we have Danny, Noreen, then Piers. Uh, hey everyone, my name is Danny and I am a law school graduate and I'll be taking the California bar exam this summer uh, so, so I can um, specialize in entertainment law. And I'm also a, a, um, a screenwriter, producer and director and I just made my first short film a few months ago and I'm hoping to start my next one coming up soon, hoping to go into development on that. Um, I also write a feature, a feature of screenplays and right now I'm currently working on my second draft to an action adventure screenplay. And uh, also just a fun fact uh, for Tommy, um, it says Star Wars The Force Awakens was the movie that got me into film, so. There you go, my man. Uh, up next we have Noreen Pierce, and then we're gonna have Andrea. Hi, I'm Noreen. I'm an actress, writer, and creator. Um, I'm currently working on the second draft of my feature coming of age script. Um, I've been doing virtual plays as an actress and I co-wrote and co-produced and acted in a short film that was in the festival circuit this year and I'll be acting in another short comedic film this year. Um, and right now I'm looking for more acting and creating opportunities with in stories that have um, a social impact and feature complex three-dimensional characters. And I love connecting with other passionate professionals and helping other creators develop their projects in any way that I can. Thank you so much, Noreen. Up next, we have, we're gonna do Piers, Andrea, then Mike. Piers, Andrea, Mike, and then Elena. And then I think that's everyone. So Piers, Andrea, Mike, Elena. My name is Piers Byfoot and I'm an actor from Toronto. I recently made my feature debut in Falling, which also had Viggo Mortensen, Lance Henriksen, Laura Linney, and some more in there. Uh, that premiered at Sundance and was also a selection at Cannes, TIFF, and some more. I'm sorry, some more. Uh, and then I'm also going to be in another feature film filming this summer, who coincidentally, another person in that feature film was also uh, a small role in Top Gun Maverick. Uh -huh. <laughs> Very nice. Let's go with Andrea, Mike, and then Elena.
Hey, Andrew, are you there? Here we go. Can you can you come back to me one second? I'm like oh, for sure. no worries, no worries. Something. Let's talk to you. <laughs> let's let's, let's talk to Mike and Elena. Thank you. <clears throat> oh, Mike, you're muted still, sir. Oh no, <laughs> we still can't hear you. Okay, uh, okay. How about, okay. How about now? Here we go. Yes, okay, sir. Let, yes, sir. Let, okay. <laughs> After that great introduction. Uh, <laughs> yeah, my name is Mike, and I'm a writer. And um, I just finished uh, a little bit back my fourth script and uh, was able to get it to uh, a good friend of mine who is a uh, uh, creator and, and showrunner for a number of uh, network uh, TV series and feature writer also. And who absolutely loved it and has we've sent it out he sent it out to a couple directors and uh, actors and hopefully uh we'll have something going on it soon but we'll see <laughs> good to see you sir we're gonna go with Bye. andrea and the last but not least elena perfect you can hear me okay Okay, perfect. Sorry, I was uh, choking on water. <laughs> um, so my name is Andrea. I grew up in San Diego, uh, studied dance, theater, pretty young, really loved just uh, expressing a different side of yourself. I studied international business at UCSD, moved to LA, moved back to Orange County <laughs> to be closer to family during COVID. And um, right now I'm working on writing a TV series to pitch to Netflix. It uh, has like magic, horror, mystery, and um, also have done a couple of short films. They were won a handful of awards. We won one in the Laughlin, which was a cool experience to go and have a mini kind of uh, not only vacation, but then also meet people from LA who now are part of my teachers and friends. So um, yeah, that's a little bit about my background. <laughs> also actress and producer. Thank you, Andrea. Last but not least, Elaine, are you there? Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, sorry, I don't have a camera on today. I'm actually kind of sick, so I don't, I don't look great. Um, but I'm an actress, I'm in San Diego. I actually moved out to California in 2019 to start my acting career. So it kind of hasn't launched at all because of the pandemic. But uh, my last acting coach was John Markland, who um, has worked with Rami Malek and Aza Gonzalez. And um, he's been pretty great. And I'm, my main interest is actually just action movies. So when I heard Top Gun, I got really excited. And uh, just, just here to network. Amazing. Thank you so much for sharing that, everybody. Once again, the whole purpose of that was for us to know who you are and for, you, uh, for all of you folks to know each other as well. So you, hopefully we have collaborators in the, in the room here. So Tommy, what I'm hearing a lot is uh, I have I get this great idea. I have the, I have the, the package together but what do I do next? How do I approach the right people? So I, I know it's a very general question, but for, for those who have like TV project ideas and they, they have a, a pitch deck together, like what's the next thing for them to do and how can they properly track the right people? Um, well, first of all, let me just say that it's, a, it's really inspiring to hear what everybody's doing because this is the beauty of our industry and our business right now is all of all of these ideas and people you're just doing things it doesn't matter if you're doing things to just figure out what's next or if you're doing things to try to see if something is an idea or what whatever it is you can just do it if you like it you keep going if you don't you pull it back you put it in the cupboard for 10 years you pull it back out it's something so that's it's really inspiring just to hear how much everybody's doing right now because i think it's a very very cool time in our in our in our uh business because you can do podcasts you could do tv you could do film you could do anything and just produce and just create and that's the thing that's what we're all here for is entertainment so it's it's uh hats off to everybody here because it's really cool to do that um to answer your question uh i think everybody experiences this every day no matter if you have 10 10 scripts that you have that have been produced and sold and and you're always trying to get things going and things take a long time to, to happen. And, um, you know, I, I did a movie last year that was going on for a very long time. And <laughs> I came out of my, my office and, and, and my house and I was like, great, we're leaving. We're going to Australia. And my wife was like, 
I never thought you would sell. <laughs> I never thought that would happen. And so it, it's, you know, stuff, it's just, I think it's just don't, don't give up and you keep pushing. And if you really truly believe in it, you just push it, push it, push it. And, you know, you create the sizzles, you create the pitch decks, you email it out, you try to find people on IMDb. I mean, right now you can, you can go direct with so many people and sometimes people get back to you and sometimes they don't. And I wouldn't say if they don't get back to you that they, that they, they don't like it or that they, they're just rude. I think try it again, because sometimes emails fall through the crack. I try to get back to, to everybody. I try to tell people it's not a good time for me. It's not, a, not looking for material or this is interesting. Let's meet or just not interested. I try to at least get a response and tell somebody. And I don't think you should take a, a no as, as a negative, take it as, as just something you put aside and you keep going forward. And do you think, uh, so cold emails, do they work nowadays? Yeah, I mean, it, it, listen, some people are a bit freaked out by it because they, they feel like it's, uh, where's Dan, our lawyer, he'll tell you now. <laughs> you know, some people get really nervous about, oh, if I respond and, and it holds me liable and this and that. I mean, I think everything goes right now, especially, you know, the last year or two. I think it's, it's why not email? You, you know, uh, I have two writers that I, that I work with that literally have almost everybody's email and they're like we'll email the person I'm like no no, no I'll, I'll call them trust me i can reach you know so it's like i think it i think does it work who knows it depends on the person but it's better than not trying quick question before i turn it over to the audience but i'm curious is it okay to email multiple people in the same company or is that too much that might be too much i think you you pick your lane and you 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 try it if you do a blast then it's it's you know, you, you want to, I also think it's, it's, you have to be careful when you do send out projects and, you know, if you to be very strategized how you do it. And, you know, if you send it to 60 people at one time, um, you know, you hope for one response, but I think you also just have to really strategize about who you want to work with, who, what, what their, their material that they're producing or they're directing and kind of go from there and really, you know, you know, it doesn't mean you have to wait for weeks or months for somebody to respond. You can move off, but just, I think it's almost like emailing 10 people in a company. Um, you just want to be strategic, you know, kind of strategize and be strategic with it. We have a question from Vikrit and then Mike. So Vikrit, you want to ask your question? Uh, yes. Uh, so, 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 so tell me, first of all, th th thank you so much for, for doing this. And uh, I, I want to say you have been a produ producer on some of my favorite films for, 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 for the past 10 years. You know, obviously you got Star Wars, Star Trek films, uh, Mission Impossible movies. And uh, but before you got into producing, you were all you were also a seasoned uh, unit production ma manager on projects. And uh, the general knowledge, as I understand it, is that as an executive producer, you have a much more broader view of the project uh, beyond like the production shooting phase, and you get to participate in the creative direction, which is, which is of course a textbook definition. In your experience, how much creative input have you actually been able to give on? The film projects you 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 were a part part of, and how has the professional dynamic between you and the rest of the crew usually worked? Um, thank you very much for for. I'm glad you like the movies that I've done. Um, <laughs> they're uh, they're I've been very fortunate to work on great films, but with great people as well and great humans. And um, uh, I think that um, I've been very fortunate to come on projects in the very early stages and when um for a big chunk of of some of the movies you mentioned it's it's an idea or let's go do this this project and then i i get a chance to sit in the writer room while they're hatching the idea and um and then in parallel trying to figure out how to do it and so um and the people i've been working with are very collaborative and listen to ideas so you, you always you know they ask you what you think of the script they ask you what they think of an idea of a character of a location and you give input and sometimes you know that you see it on screen and it's very exciting um i think to you know the way the way i approach um crew is i i've worked with a lot of the same people um over the years and then i've sometimes on projects switched it up and we haven't worked with anybody or or it's a whole new group of people and i think um, I, I like to have a very collaborative group around me and kind of give information when I know it. I also try to, uh, 
want to lead and, and have people feel comfortable uh, on, on, in the office or on the set. I want people to feel like they are heard, um, but I also want people to do, to be empowered to do their job. And I've, I try to hire the very best of people that I believe in so they can, they can, once they have the vision, they can go execute their job. And I'm not so on top of them every second, uh, making sure, you know, budget wise, they're, they're okay or creatively they're okay. Um, I really, really think about hiring the best and letting them lead their group. And I, you know, I, I listen to everybody on the crew. I want people to, uh, to voice if they have concerns or so we can solve them quickly. But, um, but yeah, that's, that's kind of how I lead, lead a crew. Thank you, Vigrants. Up next, we have a question from Mike and then Matt. Hey, Mike. Hello. Hi. Uh, thanks for giving my question. Um, just to find out about something, um, one of the producers that this friend sent my script to, uh, this producer really liked the script again, um, but was trying to tell me, try to make it, was trying to tell me something like, well, you know, it's common for a new uh, screenwriter that uh, the first film they actually don't get paid anything for the script and they just get a percentage of the net and also if their film gets made they need the chance to then get hired out to write scripts uh, a after but that for the first film generally speaking um, you know you don't get even when the thing gets greenlit you don't get paid you just open for a future payoff if the film is made. That didn't seem true to me, and I just wanted to check. Um, so if your script's going to a studio, then, then you know, in, in finance through, uh, for a union film, you, you, would, you would be, uh, you would join the WGA and be protected by their guidelines and their, their, their pay scale. Um, if you're going to do a movie, sell your script and do it non-union, uh, yes, you should be paid. Nobody should work free. And uh, unless everybody is going and taking a, a very, very low pay to get the movie made. And then my opinion is it's your story, it's your create, you created it, it's your IP. Uh, you should be in the same profit participation as everybody else, the writer, the director, the producer, not writer, the writer, but the producer and director. So it just, it really depends. Sometimes you go do a movie for $500,000 or a million dollars and everybody's taking, you know, very little and then hoping that it makes money and then you split it across the board. So in that scenario, you would just want to protect yourself that you're in equal participation with the others. Um, if it's a union and a studio project, then I would just go to the WGA website and look at what the kind of um, minimums are and you would eventually have to join the WGA, uh, but at least you can kind of, you know, navigate what those what those uh, salaries are. Yeah, this is more or less for a, a you know smaller budget type movie, non WGA, yeah. and a first first time right. Yeah. So I mean, it'd probably be depending on the budget number as well. I mean, you know, if the director is getting paid, you should get paid. If the producer is getting paid, you should get paid. Uh, that's how I look at it, and. Um, and then you, then you try to, you bank, then what you're doing is you're banking on yourself and hoping that the, the movie makes money and everybody makes money. Right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mike. Up next, we have Matt, Troy, then Ree. Hey, Matt. Awesome. Hey, thank you guys so much. Uh, so, Tommy, you know, you've, it, as you look through the lineage of your career, just from IMDb, uh, sorry if there's wind uh, back here. Going like crazy, for some reason. but um, I can, you can totally see someone working their way up from you know uh, unit production manager, producer, and then I see you're an executive producer as well. So um, I guess the general question, uh, as a clarification for me as well, is the difference between a producer and executive producer. I guess would be the main question, but also that that jump. Are you? as you get these more contacts or you know sort of how is that happening um secondary question and the first one is what's the difference between a producer and executive producer thank you very much tom 
All right, I'm gonna to try to answer it. I didn't hear your second question fully, but I'm gonna to try to answer it all. Um, uh, yeah, I, I kind of started as a production assistant, worked my way up um, uh, and as an AD and a, 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 um, a UPM. And, and I kind of took that route to understand what, uh, what everybody's role was on a film set. And um, uh, I also worked for a couple of years inside a company to understand that structure. And, and uh, I think that the, on, on movies, um, the, the, the producer, the executive producer, even on TV, executive producers are more like the showrunners or the creators of the show or, or more like a, would be called a, um, EP on a TV series would be more of like a producer on a film. And the difference between film, it's a very blurred line a lot of times. Um, some projects, a producer will uh, bring, the, bring the story to the studio um, or secure the financing. Um, and most projects, there's only a few producers on, on the movie. And when, you know, you try to limit it after three or four because then it just starts to get ridiculous. Um, executive producers, uh, it could be producers that um, a production company has the material and they give people that work for them at their company an executive producer credit. It could be a executive producer could also be somebody who has the financing, who's put a lot of money into the into the film. These are more studio projects that I'm talking about. Um, executive producer could be also the, the person who's more um, has a a overview of the physical side and the structure of the company of the of the movie uh and also there's there's sometimes there's producers that are full creative that take executive producers on projects because they're not there full time so it's a very kind of it is very blurred and you'll see steven spielberg taking an executive producer credit on projects so you'll see him take a producer credit on other projects so it's kind of it's kind of all over the place a bit um i think i'm more independent you'll see eps that are strict financiers uh, that are don that are putting money into into the into the project. Um, did anybody hear his second question? Something to do with IP, right? Yeah, I, I think. think I'm has. sorry, I went to a I went to a better spot that was out of the wind. But uh, okay. uh, the sec the the second question was like as you grow through that and you get uh, you know producer credit and then you make some money from that. Do you ever? put your own money into the projects to try and, and gain more of the pie or do opportunities sort of come to you to go into these positions or are you making it happen by taking those risks if, if that makes any sense yeah um so i think uh you know the um, i don't put my own money into into projects i would go raise money and in, in find outside financing and, and put it into the projects uh a lot of where my work that comes in is is um, people I've either worked with before or people or agents or managers that have clients that that their clients needs need somebody to produce their project. So I come in or or there's you know, there's I'm doing several projects right now with different directors that are at the same time that I've worked with their studios or companies that I worked with before. So um, that's kind of how my world works. Uh, I've also but I've also been part of some movies, some lower budget films that we've gone and raised outside financing um, and full, sold foreign, the, the foreign. So no money's come from our side, but you know we raised a million or two and sold the out, uh, foreign for a million or two. So it became a larger uh, budgeted film. And then we try to make the money back and everybody wins. Um, so there's a lot of, lot of different structures to, to do. A lot of, you know, you could go raise money through family and friends and, 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 Try, try it that way as well. I appreciate your time, Tommy. Thanks so much for being yeah. an inspiration to us all. Hey, Tommy, so I know you have a few minutes before you got to run to another chat. If we can't get to someone's question, can we still figure out a way to somehow email you the question? Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Um, I believe up next we have uh, Troy, then Re, and then we'll try to see how much more we can fit in. Um, but Troy's next. Hi, Tommy. Hey. So, um, if someone is, let's say, signed, you know, they, they already, you know, have a good standing as a potential writer um, and they get someone interested in their script, whether it's, a, you know, production company uh, or, or a particular producer, 
um, and the writer wants to direct and uh, they haven't gone to film school. They only have maybe one short film under their belt on their own time. Uh, is there any chance they could sort of pitch themselves or convince the producer to let them direct uh, a feature? Um, yeah, you can you, you, and you should, uh, but um, you should also know if you're willing to walk away if they say we want your script, but you know, we feel, you know, this is a large project or there's a lot of money behind it. And uh, we want to go with a more experienced director. I think, I think you have to just um, sometimes be open-minded with those things. Um, I do think that you should always stand by what you believe in and you should do what you, what your heart set out to and what you truly believe you can do. But I also, you know, think that when you're, depends on the budget as well, right? I mean, if it's a large money and you got to kind of look at it from a business standpoint as well. But I do think like, what I will say is, um, you know, prove them wrong and try to shoot more stuff. Try not to just have one short film under your belt. Go shoot, go shoot more, go shoot stuff on your iPhone, go shoot a sizzle reel about the film, um, create a pitch deck that nobody can say no to you about. Um, but I have seen people that have directed one film, get a film. I've seen people that, that have only done concept work, get a film. Um, so I, yes, I've seen it happen. Um, and I think, you know, you can also try to direct, uh, try to try commercials, try to do anything, you know, to just get a reel going. Uh, but that's what's so interesting about today's world is you can do stuff so much cheaper than you could five, 10 years ago. And so you can shoot things and edit it and create your own little show reel before you, uh, you know, you used to have to go get film and process it and do all that stuff. And it would, before you knew it, it'd be cost you a thousand dollars before you, before you even turn the camera on. So I think now you just have the opportunity to do so much more. So just create, create your lookbook, create your reel, create your pitch deck and try to try to make them that they can't say no to you. So just don't limit myself in terms of proving myself. Thank you so much, Tommy. Yeah, I will. I'll tell you this, though, is I, you know, I had a script for a while that we we're trying to get made and the director was very adamant about directing. And it was one of the roadblocks for people wanting to do the movie. And that person did not want to let it go. And the project ended up not making going forward, not just only because of that, but it was for financiers. It was kind of a stumbling block because they hadn't done anything at all. And they, we were asking for like 20 million dollars. Yeah, I, as much as I, I'd love to direct it's you know heartbreaking from a writer's perspective just to see something you wrote not get made yeah yeah but you know what i've also seen writers who really really want to direct and they're very vocal about it and on larger movies i've seen it where they they were attached to direct it and then they ended up letting it go because another director really liked the project and they knew it could get made so it happens at every level <laughs> awesome thank you so much troy Tommy, you get to run, or can we fit another one? No, no, keep, go keep going. Awesome. Yeah. Keep going. Let's go with uh, Re next. Re. Hopefully, I'm pronouncing your name right. Yes. Roy, Roy. Uh, Peter, you can call me okay. Peter. Okay. Yeah. So it's, it's funny, we were talking before about being, being strategic, sending emails to producers. And for example, the horror project I have, it's four characters in a house, uh, 1.5 million. And for example, Voltage Pictures, Jeff Bowler from Wonder Film and Ross Kratz, who was a producer who won an Oscar for Lost in Translation. They took a look at the pitch deck and Ross especially uh, texted me in caps saying, oh my God, Rui, this is one of the best pitch decks I have ever seen. Really, you have a, a clear vision, everything. Uh, let me take a look at the script. So I have um, an agent sending the script to them. And almost all of them said to me, give me four to five weeks to read the script and to come back to you. So about a month has, has passed. I know people are busy, but my question is, I don't wanna seem that, that I am pushing too much. When is the best time for me to go with a follow-up, you know, to go, hey, do you have the time to take a look at my script? Should I wait more? Should I, you know, it's about trying to not be too much, too much pushy and also to try, hey, listen, now it, a month has passed. What do you have to say? If you love the deck, what do you have to say about the script, you know? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, you, you um, if they say, you know, give me four or five weeks, you give them five, six weeks and send them a little text or an email and say, if you read it, if you thought about it, you know, just kind of little, little poke the bear a little bit and see what they say and, and uh, keep it brief, keep it short. And just to, just to try to get a response back, 
um, keep it friendly, uh, even though you're, you might have it, you're like, hello, it's been, you know, a month. Yeah. People don't read people, people don't read people. It takes people a long time to read. Um, it's, it's very frustrating. Uh, and we we all go through it and in return, you know, stuff comes my way and I'm like, I'm going to read it. And then you get busy and two weeks later, you're like, darn it. And you try to try to read it. And, um, uh, uh, listen, I, I had something that was sent to me and I got busy and I was traveling and, and I read it and I liked it. And I called the manager and he was like, bummer, we just sold it Paramount. And I was like, okay. <laughs> and I was like, so it, it, was a, it was a good lesson for me. And I try to read stuff when I get it quickly. So, um, you know, I think five, six weeks, if they say five and, you know, send them something that's just a quick little thing that they can respond to. Hopefully it's clever. Hopefully it's okay. funny. Makes them laugh. Makes them think of you. Something not just like, hey, what do you think of my script? Uh, why haven't you emailed me back? No, you know, try to maybe <laughs> think of think of a, some, something that they have to respond to you about back by. Yeah, actually, with with Voltage, we kind of went into, into a friendly argument because the guy, Babacar, Dian is from France. And Portugal won France in the last European yeah. uh, soccer. So we were laughing about that. So yeah, exactly. I, I know what you mean. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you for answering that question. Tommy, you want to keep going? Yeah, yeah, keep going. I'll, All right, I'll, cool. I'll uh, let's go with uh, let's go with Jeff next. Jeff and then uh, Linda. Okay, thanks. Hi, Tommy. So hey. if a person is going to be pitching a television series, do you think it's best for them to have, say, the first season completely outlined out? Or would you say completely outline the first season and several recurring or else maybe just have the first season and then just maybe say in future seasons, we envision this happening, et cetera. I'm just wondering where you strike that balance between saying like, yeah, this could be several seasons long. Who knows if it's a success, how many years it could go. And um, like, how do you sort of balance that against what a studio might be looking for in terms of length? Oh, I mean, I think it's always good to go with the Bible, you know, figure out what the whole series is. So everybody knows your, the vision. I think it's also good to go in with the pilot or first two episodes. Um, and then I think it's, it's good to know what, how to, how to continue it. It doesn't mean you have to present it or have it on paper because it's a lot of, you know, stuff for them to absorb. But if somebody does ask you the question like, oh, this is interesting. Where do you see it going? You at least have kind of hashed it out and you know where it's going and you can, you can pitch it in the room or talk about it. Um, but I also think when you go into the room, it's also good to have, you probably have this, but a visual deck because yes. once again, sometimes people don't read. And if you can visually walk them through your story, you can at least, you know, get them to think about it. Okay, great. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, Linda and then Alana, if we still have time. So Linda, then Alana. Hey, thanks for taking my question. Um, real quick, it's kind of off of the question that Troy asked, um, as me writing a feature or someone who's writing a feature and is an actor, actress, and wants to, of which they have written themselves into the script and wanting to stay with that. What are your thoughts on that? All right, I've had experience on that too. Uh, the Bible just is the, 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 which maybe you know, but it's just the, the whole season, like outline um, synopsis of the, the whole season from start to finish, episode to episode, talk about the characters, break down the characters, break down the locations, break down kind of the beats of, of everything. That's kind of what I was referring to. Um, Linda, so I, I, it's a very tricky thing because, you know, you, once again, it's the same with the directing, right? You, you want to stand by, you wrote this for yourself or you're producing it for yourself to get it made. Um, and, it, it all depends on risk. That's, that's the reality. You've got to look, look at it from a business point of view, right? Like I hate to be, be like that, but it's just, it's once you get rid of all, all through all of it, it's, it's all about risk and reward, right? So you got to, you got to look at it and go, okay, is this something with not a lot of risk and something that's really cool and we could do it in a really kind of uh, uh, cost efficient, effective way and not, we're not raising millions of dollars. We're going to do it for $500,000 or something like that. We're going to make it look bigger, but it's going to look really cool, but I'm going to be in it. That's, that's great. When you get into the weird blurred line, when it's a few million dollars or something like that, and, and it, 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 you're trying to convince people to really like give you the money and, and, but you, you know, maybe you haven't had that one project yet that that's hit. That's where it kind of gets, it's a leap of faith for some people, but I think it's just all about the project and keeping it contained in enough where, where 
you can make it for a price that looks cool. It's all outside or it's all interior. It's an environment nobody's ever seen. And you can star in it and it's not going to cost a lot of money, but it doesn't mean it can't have a lot of reach. Uh, then you're good. I think it's just, that's, that's, you know, that's the, it's a very tricky game to, 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 to go out and, um, and sell a project that's going to be millions of dollars that, uh, you know, somebody wants to, to put names in it. You know, that's, that's. Yeah, okay. Got it. Cause um, the way that it's written is it, the person that I would portray is not the main person. Um, and I've already have the visions of, and it's not to say these particular actors would be in it, but just kind of, you know, playing around with it. So I appreciate that's smart. That's, see, that's smart. That's smart. Because, you know, I've, I've been in, I've seen experiences where it's like, no, I'm playing the lead. And it's like, okay, well, how do you, how do you, you know, it's a $10 million movie. How are we going to do that? You know, but if you kind of present it in the way you just did, then that's smart. And you're going, no, 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 I'm going to, these two leads go to this person. I'll play this. It's a cool character, but it's, you know, it's, it's giving me, you know, great work and a great, in a great project, but I know that I'm going to anchor it with these people here because it'll be easier to make and faster to make or whatever, but you may have the standout role, role, right? It may be like a very cool tailored role that you've written for yourself. So that's a good way to go to bat. I think that's cool. Thank you, Linda. We're going to go with Elena next and Albert. Elena, are you there? Yeah, oh, yeah. Still good, Tommy. Still good. Yeah. Okay, cool. Elena and then uh, Albert. It's Alana. Alana, yeah. I'm so sorry. No, no problem. Um, I'm not really sure if my question is more for producer or perhaps it's for some kind of talent or casting agency. And this is a very amateur question, but in my mind, I'm thinking as a young actress, there must be some kind of untapped career path that uh, spans action as a genre specifically. And I was just wondering in your experience, because you've already produced so many action and especially, especially sci-fi films, if there's a sort of community or path that would best serve someone who knows they'd wanna be making those kinds of movies specifically rather than perhaps a more creative uh, artistic journey that spans many different ranges and therefore could be very um, eclectic. If, you know, I, I see Tom Cruise as the kind of example of, a, of an actor who has done something specifically like that. And it seems like a lot of male roles in the past have been um, like this American action dude that can continue to make those kinds of movies. So I was just wondering if there was a female side to that lifestyle. If you see that as something that requires networking with producers and directors as an actor, or if it's like you need to go into one of these big uh, talent agencies and they will place you if you are a fit. I truly think it's all about the material. And I know I hear you about wanting to do a, like a certain genre and that's cool and I think you should but I think it's all about the material because it's it's you know when 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 you're when you're have a action movie or a sci-fi movie or w whatever it is um you really are looking at the story as, as sometimes you watch these movies you're like really but you it is it's all about the story it's all about the characters and, and it's about emotion and I think so I think you know just be the best actor you can and pick the best projects action doesn't matter if it's action or sci-fi you'll get there you'll you'll you know, maybe one of those roles will be that but what i'm saying is like tom cruise and these people they pick really good roles and you look at their career and pick up pick any any of them and really will go back deep into their career and, and see how they start and what movies they start doing and uh and it's all about the character and it's all about the story and i think that if you if you choose that and you choose good roles you'll get there um, and maybe it's after the third movie, all of a sudden you're in an action movie, but it's, it's all about like really, really good characters and good roles. If you can act and you can, you can really show people that you can do it and you can and bring people have people lean in, then those other roles just come because it, it may, you may go down a path that you didn't even, you haven't even thought of yet. It could be, you know, action with, with comedy, it could be action with drama, it could be act, but you know, you start to pull off those roles. So I would just. I don't think you, you know, um, about agencies and, and managers and things like that. I think you can, you, you know, you can just, you got to believe in somebody who believes in, or they have to believe in you. 
and no matter where they're at, um, as long as you like them and you connect with them, then then they can represent you. And bigger or small, it doesn't really matter as long as you guys have a connection. Okay, great. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you, Lana. Tom, you still get better. Oh, thanks. Oh, yeah, yeah, I have. Yeah, I have two minutes, and then I got to. Oh, sorry, guys. So. So uh, no, no, what more. we're doing is ahead, ahead, for those who we don't have questions, uh, we still have questions for, um, I can still interview, uh, interview. I can still email Tommy those questions. I will get back to you as soon as we can. So I guess last but not least, we have Albert. So for the rest of you, so sorry, we're going to, we're, we'll still email the questions to Tommy and then send it right back to you. So Albert, you're up next. You're on mute. You're still. Sorry about that. Yeah. Hi, Tommy. As a talent scout for visual professionals, our goal is to connect our networks to cast our clients with opportunities. Uh, so I have Johnny Ro Roberts here in the Zoom with me. Um, who is here? Uh, who, who would you recommend? Um, wh what organization or company do you use in your films to hire stuntmen? And is there any advice that you could give? Johnny, you're still in high school? Oh, yeah, ninth grade. Oh, wow. Ninth grade. Yeah. And you already want to be a stuntman. I like it. <laughs> um, I think there's a company called Brand X. Uh, you can go online and, and Google them and, and check them out. I think also yeah, I would uh, just do a little deep dive on IMDb Pro and figure out some cool action movies, see who the stunt coordinator is. Um, some of them have direct contact, so you can see what stunt organization they're with. Um, and you can contact to them and have a, have a chat with them and see kind of what paths they've taken. I think that's a that's a good way to a good approach. Yeah, that's the last question that we that we had. Thank you very much, Tommy. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Tommy, thank you so much for being here with us, sir. Hopefully we can get you again sometime in the future. Looks like you're a popular guy. So many questions to be yeah. asked. But um uh, before we go, can we uh quickly take a, a group picture, if you will? If you do mind like taking a group a snapshot of this of our meeting. No, go ahead. Here we go. One. Two, three. One, two, three. Bam. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it, Tommy. All right. Everyone else, don't forget, cool. we have a networking hour coming up. And once again, if you didn't have a chance to, to ask Tom your question, uh, we can set it up via email. I'll send it right to him, and I'll email you folks back the question. Everyone, please check out Inner City Arts. We are still doing uh, benefits for them for the rest of the summer. And you can always find me on uh, Instagram and social media at Ramon Barati. Thank you all for tuning in and we'll see you for the networking hour. All right.